welcome to the March Q&A segment, and we're going to switch it up from now on. We are a digital magazine, and I figured, why am I typing all these answers up when it could probably help getting that answer directly from me and hearing it in my own voice? So, question number one, and be sure to get us those questions in, and I will answer them uh, as best I can every month. We've got a team of people kind of sifting through questions that have already been answered uh, in previous issues, so get those questions in on our Facebook page, and we'll do our best to get to them. Question number one. Do you think that print is going to be dead for us wedding and portrait guys soon, and how should we handle it? Well, I'm praying that print is not dead for us anytime soon. I know the pressure we're all under. Clients want their digital images now more than ever. You, me, us as photographers have to ensure we're not just handing over that CD of images. Not because we're sliding our clients in any way, shape, or form, but because it's an incomplete service. Clients do not know what to do with this stuff. Yes, they think they know what to do with it. They're going to go to Walmart and Sam's Club and Walgreens and print out you know, all the four by sixes to their heart's content and scrapbook with them. But ultimately, that's not what they should be doing with it. When clients come to me, I want them coming to me for artwork for their home. I want to help them put up something big on their wall. Maybe it's on fine art paper. Maybe it's on an acrylic or metal uh, or canvas. I'm going to work with my client as a value-added service trying to make the right determination for size and placement in their home. That has to be the value add. If you are just a shoot and burner, then yes, for you, print is dead. But when a client comes to us, they understand that they are getting printed media delivered to them, whether it's a canvas, whether it's an album, or any of the host of other products that we offer. So keep that in mind when you're putting your packages and pricing together. Question number two, how do you get couples to feel comfortable in front of the camera and to act natural? Look. No matter who you are, even you as a photographer, me as a photographer, when we first start working with someone, there's that nervous energy. People don't know what to do. They don't know how they look or feel and, or, or should feel in front of the camera. That's on you as the photographer to work with them and get them to feel comfortable. I always like to say the first 20 minutes of every shoot is a complete waste of time. They don't know what to do. They, they, and so I usually put them in their worst outfit because I know, <coughs> because I know it's not going to look right uh, or feel right, I should say. And then I work with them through all the hiccups uh, that are going to happen, right? Whether they're popping their hip the wrong way or they're tilting their head back when they start laughing. I know these are things that ultimately will not sell well and they won't like the way they, they look. So let them have fun. But here's the key. When my clients are doing something that looks stupid, that is on you. You have to give them feedback and let them know. And I pull my client to the side right from the get and I go, okay, here's our deal with each other. If you do something that looks stupid, I'm going to tell you. And if I'm doing something that makes you feel stupid, you got to tell me. That's our deal. And they usually will laugh at that, but they know that they can trust me and I become the trusted advisor for them. And then the relationship begins from then, from that, then on. Also, this is why uh, engagement sessions are so important. You get comfortable with each other. Now, if you have a, a portrait session, man, you've got very little time to get them comfortable in front of the camera. But keep it loose, keep it natural, and give them feedback. That is the ultimate key. Question number three. When ordering prints, do you have them shipped to your studio first so you can preview them, or does the lab package it perfectly and send it to the clients? Absolutely not. Do not send directly to the clients. I cannot tell you how many times a lab has made a mistake, and it's innocent enough. I, I don't think they're making these mistakes on purpose. However, we want to be the last uh, you know, outpost, if you will, for quality control. We have to manage quality control in our studio. So those prints come in, we want to inspect them, we want to make sure they printed the right way. And by the right way, I mean printed the way I have them looking on my monitor, the way maybe I showed the client during a sales session. Something didn't go wrong in the ordering process. Something didn't get bent or damaged in the ordering process. And then we package everything uh, internally before we deliver it to a client. Now the next question might logically be, well, what do you do when you've got out of, out of town guests or clients, things like that? We still receive them, we package them, inspect them, then we ship them off to our clients. We want to maintain complete control. Will that add an extra day or two to the process? Sure. Just set reasonable expectations with your clients and usually they're going to be okay with that. Uh, question number four. How do you deal with all the point and shooter guests getting in the way uh, of your shots? Man, welcome to the real world here. When I'm at a wedding, uh, especially at a church or the reception, there's people running all over the place with cameras. 99% of them don't know what the hell they're doing with them. Uh, they're just firing off shots. And I'm, I, I kid you not, I will grab the camera from a guest sometimes if I see like, what'll happen on the dance floor, actually let's go to the church. What'll happen at the church is I'm posing all these family groupings, right? Getting people together. And I've got a million people over my shoulder 
trying to take family pictures at the altar. If I seem to see somebody's got a digital SLR, I will actually take that camera for them, especially if it's a, an important family group or family member. I will take that camera from them, tweak the settings, and go, let me get that for you. And then I will take the picture uh, for them. You know what? Ultimately, that picture is not going to look as good as mine is. I'm going to do post-production on that image. I'm going to enhance that image, skin soften that image. They're looking at it right out of camera. So they are not your competitors. And I know, God, I know people out there are just hating everybody who's got a camera and they see everybody with a camera as, as your competition. If the only thing you're competing on is your digital SLR, you're screwed. That, that's the least of your worries. There's got to be other things you're competing with. And uh, that's got to be service. That's got to be quality. Editing. Everything adds up to your... Um, you know, to your competitive advantage. Now, that doesn't have anything to do with them getting in the way of your shot. So sometimes, be polite, tap them on the shoulder and just be like, hey, I don't know if you realize this, you're stepping in front of me on the shots. Uh, and, and that's how it goes, man. You've got to work around uh, all those people at your event. Number five, last question. When do you know it's time to go full-time? How do you finance your new business? Well, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? All I can do is share with you how I knew it was full-time. Uh, what I ultimately did is, first and foremost, photography was my passion. It was since I was a little kid, but I was more of a weekend warrior uh, or an enthusiast, right? Many of you out there are facing that same challenge. You hate your job, you want to punch out, but you don't want to punch out and be broke. Uh, none of us do. And what I did was, I love, this is why I love weddings. Every year, weddings are predictable, okay? Predictable in the sense that they're booking six months, eight months, a year out. So I can at least look at my finances and know, okay, I'm at least going to be this busy next year. Portraits, seniors, families, babies, they're, I think they're unpredictable, right? One month you could have 30, another month you could have two. Uh, granted, you could market and advertise all you want, but it's still somewhat unpredictable. So I use weddings kind of as the foundation for my business. And what I did was when I had about 15 weddings on the books, 20 weddings on the books, I knew it was time to punch out and do this full time. And that was back in 2007, 2008 timeframe. At about 15 or 18 weddings, I don't remember off the top of my head, but they were contracted weddings. And I knew, okay, this is my baseline. Now I'm gonna, t I'm gonna quit my job and I'm gonna use all that time and energy to market my business, go after seniors, go after families, and fill the void of all that extra revenue that I needed for my business to uh, be successful. Guys, great questions this month. I hope the answers were valuable and useful to you. Uh, be sure to you know, use Facebook and get your questions in for next month and uh, get at it.